Hello all, BL Carter here again um, with another video uh, talking about the church. Um, and I'm doing it this way just so that they're short enough so that you can get the content of that particular um, mini subject, if you will, and not have to watch an extended video. Most of us are tired or, you know, we've had a long day and we're trying to get a few minutes in in the evening or we're trying to do stuff on our lunch breaks or, you know, in between one appointment to the next, etc. So making them shorter, I do realize, um, makes it easier for people to get the content, to digest it and, um, you know, act accordingly. But um, this this particular segment is to just briefly talk about the church and the tithes and income. Now, several videos have been done um, talking about, you know, a lot of people, not just me, but a lot of people are talking about how um, pastors are passing around the, the offering plate multiple times and they're harping on tithes and offerings, tithes and offerings, getting your money in, getting your money in. I won't get so much into um, the, the scriptures that talk about tithing um, just because those scriptures Old Testament was really talking about tithing of resources, not so much of actual money, because those resources went to build um, the storehouse, the um, place where stuff is to be stored and divvied out to the appropriate persons as needed over a period of time. And back then, it was really a matter of the priests that were maintaining the, the, the temples or tabernacles or the temples. Um, they didn't work. Their job full-time was to be there, to be the intercessor for the people. Uh, and as orphans and widows and stuff came through that needed assistance, that which was built up was shared with them. So um, that's where the, the, the tithe came from way back when. And it has evolved into um, more of the actual cash money and less of the the um the resources so um but that being to the side just want to tell you bottom line church is a business church is a business um legally it is a legal entity um oftentimes you will find a church if you do digging and i suggest everyone do this to the church that they belong to do your research go down to the courthouse and see the um legal structure of that particular organization um, oftentimes you will find that they are DBAs I'm sorry so proprietorships operating under a DBA a sole proprietorship means a single owned business owned by one person um, oftentimes that one person is going to be the lead pastor or it might be a partnership and that might be between husband and wife uh, a, a pastor and co-pastor or, or whomever but these are businesses um, and they will do the DBA paperwork in attachment to the business license if you will and um, when you look on it the question it asks is what product are you selling and your, your service business and the product that you're selling is religion um that being the case, if it's a business, what a business is in place to do? Earn money, to bring in money. Um, you've got the 501c3 um, status or qualification which says they're not for profit. And no, they might not be for profit because every dollar that they pump in that business to bring in is going to pay for the business needs. And then what becomes the business needs? The pastor's transportation the pastor's residence, um, the leader's transportation, the leader's residence, all these things get written off as a business expense or get coded in as a business expense. So yeah, it's not for profit because the pastor has to have some place to sleep in order for them to come in and sell you more religion next Sunday. The pastor has to have a car to get back and forth to the church or wherever else y'all are meeting to sell you more religion so that you can give more money. So think of it in that regard. It's a business. 
when you think of so you got the government paperwork that requires um the the license the the 501c3 if they go that route um the dbas and the dba is usually going to list the name of the church the business um structure paperwork is going to show what type of business it is and who the owner is or owners are whether um it's a sole proprietorship uh, a partnership an llc a corporation whatever that's going to be one set of paperwork and a next set or actually actually emerging can be on, on the same form um it's going to have a dba status or, or indication and that's where they would put um you know they're doing business as um first temple of god or second temple of of main street whatever name they want to call it um you know church of, of third street um so in that regard it is a business then you also look at when they're getting funding from the bank when they go to apply for a bank loan they apply as a church and they, they apply as a business um as a church and then um they have to do what just like any other bank loan they've got to produce all their financials etc they've got to show the income so does the bank grant this business a loan to purchase a new building based on the number of clients the number of customers based on the number of sales that's the sunday money coming in or wednesday bible study whenever the money is coming um that's the tithes and offerings that are coming in uh the bank paperwork requires that they provide their articles of incorporation or you know whatever documents legal documents they have establishing um what type of structure business structure that they have bank paper loan paperwork also requires them to identify who the officers are you've got your president your vice president your um secretary treasurer all those positions these you know some of these people would actually be contractually liable for the payment the repayment of the loan but the bank requires all of that the articles of incorporation require all of that all of these entities are requiring them to establish a hierarchy of who's in charge who's the boss who's the second boss who are the the auxiliary staff or administrative staff who are working and helping along the way so in that regard there is a need and in any nonprofit legitimate nonprofit organization there is a need for structure um in the the in in the, in the leadership there is a need to have someone has to be leader someone has to be the spokesperson someone has to um conduct the meetings just like in a courtroom you've got a judge they're the leader but they've got a bailiff next to them that works with them they've got their court reporters um the court clerks and everyone else that's working in conjunction but that judge is the leader of that courtroom so that being the case the world has 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 created um a need for there to be this structure we get lost when we get caught up in the structure and we start living out that structure well they get lost when they start living out that structure feeling like they're different because they are the president of that company or the secretary of that company or you know whatever their title may be that's where it gets lost then human we man um kind of gets off the beaten path we fall off or they fall off the wagon if you will when it comes to that because they've had to do all this other stuff that puts them that helps to put them in a mindset of this hierarch hierarchical structure this um level of them being elevated over and um what i didn't include in the, the video talking about the churches not all of them are bad i will say this here it's a strong church that has um all of that in place you've got the the appropriate state licensing county licensing you've got the appropriate dba file the appropriate um banking loans etc in place and the leaders still call themselves brother john or you know sister jane they won't take titles or they won't allow you to call them pastor so-and-so or your first lady whatever or associate pastor this or bishop this they don't want the titles 
when you've got an organization that um, the leadership does not want your titles um, or wants you to address them with a title, there might be some place you might want to visit a few more times and, and continue to check out. Um, boards. Some organizations don't even have a board. There is no board to go to. Some of these churches, there is no board. There is that person who signed their name on the paperwork down at the courthouse and the few people that they have within the clique or within the administrative department, um, the co-pastors, secretaries, finances, whomever's dealing with the funding and, and the logistics of taking care of stuff in the building. That's the board. But those people don't have any rights, so to speak. Or they don't have any say-so, so to speak, unless the pastor explicitly gives them permission or rights to um, handle building scheduling or permission or rights to, um, you know, spend X amount of dollars without going through him or her for additional consent. So when we think of going to boards, if there is no board, where's the accountability coming from? It's coming from you, the people that are sitting there, or it's coming from uh, police or governmental agencies if they do something wrong. And that means you got to open your mouth and speak up. Otherwise, there's no oversight. They can do what they want. If there is a board, then you've got some recourse. You've got somewhere to go. That pastor oftentimes is actually hired um, and can be fired. I've seen it. I've seen pastors. I've gone through the hiring process of pastors at a church. I've gone through the, the process of pastors having to step down or, or being asked to step down and the board stepping in and going through the process of finding another pastor, et cetera, et cetera. But I say all that to say, um, just be mindful that a church is a business um, and they're in the business of selling religion. We asked, we discussed previously at some point, what is religion? Religion is a tool by which we control the, the, the minds, the thoughts, the behaviors of the people, of people. Um, so think about that. Think about that and then think about when we're asking ourselves, or when you're asking yourself, why are they always asking for money all the time? Well, yeah, it does take money to run the building. It does take money to, you know, pay the lights and, um, you know, keep the air running and keep the water going so you can go to the restroom and, and have a clean restroom and, and not be you know, using a toilet that's, that everyone else is using and hasn't flushed. Obviously, there, there are some needs maintenance to, to keep it up. But um, if you've got a place that doesn't have financial transparency and showing you all of that stuff, it's a business. When you go to work every day, does your boss come to you and say, look, these are the finances for the year? Mm -mm. Your boss doesn't come to you and say that. He doesn't even tell you what, what the surplus is or if y'all are in the red, whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. He just gives you what, you know, whatever y'all agree to. You might get a bonus, you might not. If you're late, he's going to sure take it out your check. And that's it. But he's not going to sit there and show you all the light bills that have been coming in, how much they've spent on electricity for the year, how much they've spent on water, how much they've spent on maintenance, etc. Now you might complain and say, hey, we're spending too much on the lights. We got to get it down. Start turning your lights off at night um, when you go home. But he's not going to show you the, the, the bills. He's not going to give you a, a full um, financial disclosure. And trust, I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. I've I heard with my own two ears a pastor stand in the pulpit and tell the members who have been questioning the finances, told them, my name is on the loan. My name is on the paperwork. You don't have a right to the finances. I'm not giving that information to you. And expected people to continue putting in all their money and neglecting their families and their goals and dreams and desires. And who knows, the mission that God had really for them, pumping it into this building. So, or into this entity. Keep those things in mind. Church is a business. Some businesses are run well. Some businesses have a true purpose, a true agenda. 
that um, is positive and, and strengthening in some businesses, their objective is to separate you from your money. And whatever it takes to do it, that's what they're going to do. And whatever product they can use to do it, whether it's a, a, a physical, tangible product or whether it's a service, that's what they're going to do. You have to be mindful and um, take some accountability in uh, looking for these things. And if you're young and naive, like many people are, you got to do the work. You got to do the research. You got to see what's going on. And you got to hear. When people are sharing information with you, hear it. Hear it. Analyze it. Flip it. Or toss it around. And then take action accordingly. That being the case, you guys take care. Be blessed. Be safe. All that other good stuff. Continue to work on your puzzle one piece at a time. And we will catch you on the next one. Have a great day, guys.